Welcome back to DIY Tech and Repairs. Today we are going to take a look at how we can hook up the bait drum system to a chunk chip of some kind or another. And in this first video we will do it very very simple and start with the basics. And in the upcoming videos we will enhance this a little bit for safety and for feedback to the Watchmon system. To be able to hook up any external shunt or devices that you want to control, first of all you need the expansion board. And that's just a matter of hooking it up with the expansion cable and do not forget to add power to the expansion board as well. So let's take a look at the software. In the Patreon Watchmon Toolkit system, you need to go to Menu and Hardware. Accept and understand. Then you need to click on Expansion. And you need to edit and make sure you have clicked the expansion board that you have on your system. In my case it is the 48 volt expansion board R1. The next thing is to pick one of the relays that we are going to use. In my case I'm going to use the relay number 1. And in this video we are going to concentrate on critical faults. So as you can see here we have several to choose between and we are choosing the critical fault. When you're done with that, you press save. And when you have saved this, it's now time to take a look at what you can do with it. So let's go to menu and control logic. And in control logic, you have different tabs in the top here. You have the critical ones, charging, discharging, thermal, remote, volt view and temp view. I'm going to base this video on this huge breaker that I have here. It's a 300 amp and it does DC as well. What's important when you get your breaker that you are going to control is the so-called shunt chip. And this is on one of the version. You can of course use a contactor or anything else like that. The shunt chip here that I have on this device is 24 volt AC or DC. This specific model here will need somewhere around 2 amp to trip. So that's important to understand how much current is needed for this to go off. Because it may be that your expansion board will not tolerate this current and then you need to add an external board to drive this. In this case it do work. So basically we have those two wires here going into the shunt chip and that's what's going to control it. This breaker also has an auxiliary switch and this is where we can sense if the shunt have tripped or if it is in disabled state. This will be for an upcoming video where I actually show you how the watchman can determine what have happened. We need to get power into those cables here. Since I don't have 24 volt on this setup here, I have brought in these two wires here that are hooked up to my power supply and will be supplying 24 volt. One of them are directly hooked up to the shunt chip and the other one and including the shunt chip wire will be hooked up into the expansion board. And this is to be able to make a continuous loop and the power will go through when the relay is pulled. Before we are going to hook anything up here, as once again, disconnect everything. So what I do is I pull the USB plug and I shut the system down. This to prevent any catastrophic failures. So let's start. I'm using the relay number 1 and that's contact 11 and 12. The contacts are rather small so you need to make sure that you have small wires. Otherwise you will not get them into the hole. What's important to understand here as well is that when you enable or start up this system it will trip the shunt. So if you are connecting up a breaker in this way that I am today, beware of to put the shunt breaker or trip shunt breaker or whatever you want to call it after the power to the watchman. Otherwise, otherwise the watchman will kill itself when going through. And you will see it when we start it up. There are small LEDs in the corner here. So let's start the system up. And as you see, relay number one chipped. And it will go to critical state before it goes okay. 
It takes somewhere around 30 seconds for my setup right now to go to OK state. And now it is OK, as you can see there. The system also has something that is called load on and off and battery on and off. So practically you can be using those as well, but by using those you need to have external components to actually control the shunt chip. In this video we go for the very very simple method and we're using the built-in relay. So let's hook the USB up. And let's go to the computer again. So we have a couple of things that we can do here. And before we add, actually add up the shunt, so let's do a simple test. Let's go to edit. And as we can see the actual voltage is 4.04 volt. So let's change the threshold to 4 volt. And as you can see up here we have the battery OK state. It should take, as soon as I press save, it should take roughly 5 seconds to actually go into the next state. And that's defined here. You also have a delayed restart and that is at 30 seconds. In a real scenario, the delay to go to a critical state should be 1 to 2 minutes depending on the setup. Save. If we take a look at the board here, you will see the red light turned on in this corner here. And that means that the shunt has chipped due to the voltage. You can also see it on the screen here that the yellow marks up there is where we have some kind of issue or a setting that is not accurate. Let's go back and change that to 4.2 volt again and we save it. It is now time to go back and do a real life test. I have the shunt chip breaker here, it's hooked up, it is in on state. I also have the system hooked up fully here, I have power going to the cord. The only thing protecting or preventing the breaker for tripping is the relay here controlled by the watchman. Let's do a scenario where we actually disconnect one of the long months here, one of the protective things, and see what happens to the breaker. This is just one of the all the protection it does have. So let's remove one of them. Let's take this one here, we take the communication cable it's now out and there it tripped as you can see the breaker went from red to yellow and you can hear the annoying beeping the annoying beeping actually a voltmeter hooked up here so I can't miss it so what happened now, it's chipped this one to the yellow one. I can pull it to off, but I cannot turn it on again, because it goes to yellow directly. Put the communication cable back in. It's now back in, and we have the red LED here, showing. So we need to wait somewhere around 30 seconds for this to go OK again. And you can also see the red blinking here that states that we are in a critical state. And if you would have had the RGB LED that I had in another video, it will be showing on that RGB LED strip as well. And now it went to happy state again and it's green. The relay is shut off and that means we can turn the breaker or the shunt trip on again. So we go to off and we can go to on again. Today's video was about how you can in the simplest way hook up a shunt trip to a watchman system and break by just simply doing it this way. It's not the most optimal way and it's not the most safe way but at least you have the basic protection. And if you get yourself a Batrium system this is the first thing you should do. Yes, the Batrium will take care of balancing and reporting back to you guys but what if you aren't at the computer? How do you protect the system? With a shunt trip like this and the watchman hooked up, you can easily protect the system. So guys, I hope you learned something today. This was the first video of the shunts connected to the watchman or the Batrium system. There will be coming a little bit more of those. Some a more complicated setup and more advanced one. So guys, stay tuned for that and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And I see you next time. Bye!